Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, the best place to learn Lightroom. And we've got a Lightroom disaster on our hands and I'm gonna take you through this. This is an intermediate level tutorial. So I'm gonna assume that you already kinda of know your way around Lightroom and you're just gonna be there with me and we're just gonna go through it, so let's go. We have a little bit of disaster. So I was shooting, this is in a church in Rome. I was doing a workshop in Rome a few weeks ago and I put a platypod down low, right on the floor. And I took this shot and this is the normal exposure. And then this is the, I was bracketing. This is two stops under and this is two stops over. <laughs> what happened there? Well, what happened was I thought the exposure was over. And so I picked up the platypod off the ground. My mistake, I didn't wait until the little red light stopped beeping and this is what it looks like. So we're only gonna be able to work with the first two exposures, which is the normal exposure and this other one. And let's make sure we don't keep hearing the dinging of my email. Okay, so here we go. We have this shot to work with and this shot. I'm gonna just go ahead and do an HDR here in Lightroom. Let's just see, I'm gonna select two images. We're of course not gonna select that third one, but let's go ahead and do photo merge HDR and see it, you know what we get. I think we'll get something salvageable. Yeah, I had merged them together and look, I've got some detail there in the, uh, in the area where I was worried about losing detail in, inside the stained glass and stuff and up here. So, you know, we're, we're in pretty good shape and let's hit merge and it's going to give us a DNG. So we'll have a raw photo when we're done. So we started with two raw photos. By the way, these, these photos were taken with a, the new Canon EOS R mirrorless cameras, which is what I had with me there. All right, they are stacked together. You can see in the corner here, there are three three images stacked together. That's the HDR and the two that I did together. So let's, uh, that's the normal and there's the two stops under and here is the HDR. So you can see it, it is actually not bad. Here's normal two stops under and then there's this other exposure. So while the, it is, you know, a bit underexposed, um, at least it is a blend of the two. So we're kind of okay. And it did a little auto, toning over here already. So let's fix that because the auto toning is usually not awesome. So let's go over here. I'm going to hide the little bottom strip there and let's increase the contrast. Let's increase the exposure a little bit. Uh, let's, uh, how's the whites and blacks? Shift double click on the white slider, shift double click on the blacks and it sets our white and black point for us. Let's increase the clarity a little bit. Oh yes, clarity. And, uh, it's not looking bad. Look at this. Look at this um, support here up in the roof. It's like bent to death. So you can see that there are some lens problems and it's it's a pretty significant lens problems because look, the floor is almost straight, but I, there's just a lot of little lens problems. Let's go down to um, lens corrections. I'm going to turn on the profile for this camera and it was a 16 to 35 I was using and you can see that did help some of the problems, some of the dis barrel distortion and stuff that was happening. It's not bad. Uh, there's there's just some other problems that, let's go to transform here. Let's hit auto and see what auto does. I'm not sure that auto was awesome. <laughs> let's try level. It still needs, I think, a little bit. Eh, I, guess it, I guess it's fairly level. I'm kind of looking down here, but you can see that the roof kind of bends. We're going to have to jump over to Photoshop to fix some of this mess. But before we do, let's go ahead and do a few things here inside of Lightroom. Let's go to the adjustment brush, and I'm going to brighten up these areas over here. So let's increase the, uh, well, let's double click effect to make sure everything's set to zero. Let's increase the exposure a little bit, and let's paint over that area right there to brighten it up. And let's see, maybe this area. Let me make my brush a little smaller. I'm using the left bracket key there to make it smaller. And let's paint in these areas here just to brighten them up. It's a little dark up here. Let's hit new and then let's try brightening this up. I don't want to brighten it too much, which is why I wanted to hit new first so I can control those areas separately. And let's, one of the reasons why I wanted to come to this church was because. Uh, it has the that beautiful blue roof. So let's make sure you at least can see it, right? It's a little dark right in here. We can maybe brighten that up. And it's kind of dark down in this whole area. So we can brighten all that up. Maybe this area right there. Now, now that we've uh, brightened some areas, let's darken some others. Let's hit new. And I, there's a couple of areas that look like, I'm just going to lower the exposure here. Look like they might be a bit bright. And uh, right in here, right up there might be a little bright. And especially here on the pipe organ over there, 
a little bit over here maybe. I'm just trying to get a general balance where things aren't, you know, they're not too bright and they're not too dark, you know, just kind of a general, I think we're, oh, it's a little bright over here on the far right. So let's paint that in. And I think we've got a general okayness, <laughs> if that's even a word, here. Uh, there's not much more that I can do that, that would really be meaningful here in Lightroom as far as fixing like the lens stuff and all. So at this point, I mean, it's not bad. You could say, well, this is certainly better than where we started. Uh, where did we start? Yeah, so we could say, well, yeah, it's, it's gotten a little better. But I think if we could go over to Photoshop, we could really fix some of this lens distortion stuff better over there. But uh, we could try a little horizontal, changing the horizontal a little bit. It's going to put the image a little off. We could rotate it back straight a little bit. That's better, I think. That, that bar is still a little screwy there. And I could hit Constrain Crop so it would crop it in. I think it needs to rotate just a tiny bit more. Maybe something like that. It's better, but uh, I think I might have rotated a little too much. All right, let, let's just stop messing with it here and let's just go over to uh, Photoshop. Let's press, uh, well, let's just go right click here and we can go to edit in. Let's go to, I really wanted to go to the uh, new Photoshop 2019, but it doesn't much matter. We'll go to the Photoshop 2018. Boo, the old version. All right. Well, it's only like two days old, so it's not 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 too old. All right. So here's our image. Uh, I need to unlock the background layer so I can stretch it. You unlock the background layer by just clicking on the lock. <laughs> Boom, we're ready to go. Just click on it and it unlocks. Let's press Command T on Mac or Control T on Windows to go to Free Transform. And here's what I think we need to do is uh, let's hold the shift key and just pull this, or not the shift key, I'm sorry. We're going to hold the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and just kind of pull this. I'm looking at that pole. See that little that little bar there? Trying to get that thing straight. And I think when we get that straight, that's going to cure a lot of ills. And I think that's pretty close. I might need to tug it a, a hair more. But that's not bad. And over here, how are we looking? We might need to come out a little bit. I'm just trying to kind of get it all straight looking, and that's pretty close. So I'm going to hit return or enter to lock it in, and 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 watch the difference that little move made. See how it was kind of tugging down to that that dipping down to the top right corner, and now it's it's I think it's certainly much better. So uh, what else could we do to this thing? Well. It's, it's not perfectly centered. By the way, if you want to find the center, here's what we can do. Watch a little trick here. Go to the view menu. Go to a uh, new guide and say, I want a vertical guide at 50%. And it will put a vertical guide right in the middle of the photo. So that's where the actual center of this photo is. You can see mine's off a little bit. Ooh, this is going to be tough. So if I go over this way it's and get it kind of... Wow, you can see. So if I line up that roof, let's go over just a bit. It is not lining up very well with the rest of this. Let's go back to free transform, and I'm going to try to grab this bottom center and just kind of slide it over a little bit. So this stuff kind of lines up a, a bit better. That's not bad. All right. Now, what if I can bring the size down a little bit more? Oh, I can't bring too much more. I got a bunch of stuff missing over there. There's a big gap over here. I think we're going to wind up having to crop a bit of this. Let's get rid of this guy now that we know we're centered up. And we're going to have to crop. This is a sad. It's a sad, sad day when you have to crop. Let's take off a little of the floor. Because if we're going to lose something, you know, let's lose the floor. Let's hold the shift key so it's proportional. Let's lose a bit of that floor. But then when you do that, it's going to off-center it a bit. We're getting close, though. Look at that. Not terrible. Now, I want to see how Content Aware Fill is going to work over there. <laughs> it may or may not. Select that area with the tragic wand. To get better results, you'll go into the Select menu under Modify and choose Expand and type in the number 4. And that will usually give you better results when you actually go to use Content Aware Fill. So I chose Fill. There's Content Aware. Click OK. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> I think um, it did like pretty well down here. I think we're going to have to just keep cropping a little more. I hate to do that, but 
Content Aware Phil did okay, but it didn't do super awesome. So let's just say I bring it in a little bit more. That's probably enough. And then scoot it this way. Maybe Content Aware Phil can fill in that better. It's a smaller area. Again, expand by four pixels. I do have a backup plan, by the way. If this doesn't work, <laughs> you're not going to like it. But okay, let's see what it does. That's not too bad. You got a little little messy stuff here. What about this? Ready for this? Don't 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 shoot the messenger, but watch. Go to free transform and just stretch it, stretch it, stretch it a little. Uh, you can probably just stretch it that much, and then Content Aware Phil can fix this little bottom over here, no problem. So it is cheating a little, but I don't think anybody would notice. And uh, it's not something I haven't had to do before. <laughs> Now let's try Content Aware Fill. It'll probably nail that little area right over there perfectly. Yeah, boom, money. All right, let's flatten the image. And let's go and sharpen it while we're here in Photoshop because it's easy to see the sharpening. Let's put quite a bit of sharpening on it. 120, 1 1.2, and 3. That's quite a bit of sharpening. And then let's take it back to Lightroom to finish this bad boy off. So let's go to Save and Close. So I'm just going to choose Save and close just close it and when we go back to lightroom it should be waiting there for us boom there it is and uh it doesn't look too bad let's just go see if there's anything else we need to do to it you could go and add a little uh tone curve you could add a medium contrast little curve there oh i think we're done <laughs> i think do we need to do anything else uh, throw a little extra clarity on there am i working on the right one yeah i am right yeah 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 that's the right one just want to make sure i'm like Wait a minute. No, but it looks pretty good now. And let's, we could add a little hair, but more clarity. The last thing I would probably do is I'm going to add a slight vignette. So slight, you can't even tell I added it. Go over to the effects panel. Let's go to minus 11, which is just the tiniest little bit. You won't even notice it's there until you turn it off. So watch what happens when you toggle it off. See? Just on the outside edges, all the way around, kind of takes the heat off that outside edge. And I think at that point, yeah, we got a pretty good image and we started off with a disaster. All right. So while I have your attention, how about going over to Kelby One and sign up for a free account? Free, free, free. So if you want to learn Photoshop, we have a class over there in, there in our free membership. It's just free, no credit card needed, just sign up. We have a free class over there called Learn Photoshop CC in One Hour. So if you're kind of like, I know I need to learn Photoshop and some of that stuff he just did is kind of cool, you know. In an hour, I can get you up and running. In one hour, you'll be like, hey, I'm using Photoshop. It's an hour. Come on. So uh, head over to kelby1.com, sign up for the free membership level. It, there's other classes there too, but that's the one I would recommend. Go ahead and start with Learn Photoshop CC in one hour, and you'll super dig it. It won't cost you anything, and it won't even have to put a credit card or anything. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for taking care. I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you guys online. Take care, everybody.